right, welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Uh, in this video, I am going to be answering questions that were posed by Rob from Malkir Talks. Uh, another YouTube channel is my friend, and uh, he tagged me in this video. I'm going to link his channel below, and I'll even I'll link his tag video below. Uh, basically, what Rob did is he made a series of questions about the Wheel of Time, mostly about the TV show, and I he answered them, and then he tags other people. That's how a YouTube tag works, if you don't know. He tags other people to answer the questions. And like I said, this, these questions are all about the Wheel of Time and mostly the TV show, and we're just getting on the hype train, talking about what we love and what we're looking forward to in the show. And because we're mostly focusing on the show in these questions, I'm going to do my damnedest to make a spoiler-free video. I'm obviously going to be spoiling season one, uh, and I'm going to try not to allude to things in the books that weren't mentioned in the show. Um, uh, but I will be talking about differences, but I'm going to, like, I'm not, I'm not going to try, I'm going to try not to spoil anything past the first book, except for the final question, because the final question, I kind of have to, uh, but I will let you know about that when that's coming. Uh, and yeah, I guess, uh, without further ado, let's get on board the hype train. Let's be nerdy, let's be nerdy, let's be nerdy, let's be nerdy. The first question on uh, this tag is, what is your favorite episode from season one? <laughs> now, why you got to do this to me, Rob? Why you want me to pick between my babies? I mean, I know, okay, I know when the show was coming out, I was giving the episodes ratings out of 10. And I could go back and see what they were, but that'll be work. <laughs> Plus, people's minds change over time, and I don't think I need to be consistent. I do think that I've said in the past that episode four was my favorite. And I mean, if you know me, it's not hard to guess why I would have said that. It's a naive heavy episode and I'm all about naive. But I think with a bit more distance or <laughs> a lot of distance, my God, season two can't come soon enough. Uh, I think I'm going to change it to, to episode six, the Flame of Tarvalon or Tarvalon, the way they say it in the show. If you're watching my YouTube channel, you know that my YouTube name is lesbianerdy. And so, yeah, it's not a stretch to guess that I'm picking this episode for the lovely sapphic elements. And those elements are amazing and incredible. I'm not going to lie, but they're not the reason I'm actually picking this episode. Uh, I think this episode actually encapsulates something that the show gave me that I didn't know I wanted. And that is, it's a new perspective on the events of the Wheel of Time. It's Moraine's perspective. I've always liked Moraine. I might even say loved her. And like I said, I'm trying my best to make a, a non-spoiler video. So let's just say that, you know, there are events that happen in the story that made me feel emotions in regards to her. But she was never a character that I that I I tried to understand or tried to to see her point of view. And the show has made me think about her and what she gave up in order to do what she did, this quest that she's been on, it derailed her life. It became her life. And all of that is present in the books, but I I just never thought about it. And the show has both highlighted it and enhanced it by showing us explicitly what she has given up for her cause. Her and Swan have a love that spans space, space and time and whatever, but their, but their love must come second to the fate of the world. So yeah, episode six, not just because it's good on its own, but because it changed my, my experience with the story of the Wheel of Time. It's given me a new perspective, a new thing to think about. And I, I love that. All right. Second question. Who is your favorite character from season one? All right. Well, this answer isn't going to surprise anyone who knows me. It is absolutely naive. Uh, I actually had someone ask me recently uh, who I liked more, naive in the show or naive in the books. And I said, they're the same. And they, they look shocked. It is a well-documented fact that Nynaeve is my favorite character. And I am just, I'm astounded to see her on screen in, in a way that feels 100% lifted from my brain. The, the writers, the directors, Zoe Robbins, they all must have the exact same understanding and interpretation of her character as, as I do. Because she's, she's perfect. Like, in all her imperfections, she is perfectly Nynaeve. She is brave and, and brash, but you can see that she's wearing that as a, 
as a veil over her insecurities, her, her dynamic with Maureen. Again, it feels like it came right off the pages through the filter of my personal interpretation and, and headcanon and was put on screen. It's, it's almost kind of frightening. Like, did, did Rafe read my diary? I'm joking, of course. I do not have journal entries about 90s. Perhaps I should, but I don't. But it is it is very clear that everyone involved in the creation of her character for the show read the books in the same way that I did, saw the same things in her that I do, and it makes me so excited. I will just add, just because that answer was a gimme. Like, everybody knew that was going to be my answer, right? So my second favorite character, Moraine. But I won't go into why, because it's mostly the same things I said in answer to question number one. All right, question number three. What is your favorite piece of dialogue from season one? This is a hard one <laughs> because there's so much. My favorite line read, like by which I mean, I don't know if the dialogue would have been great if not for the way Rosamund Pike delivered these lines. There's actually two line reads that I just love. Uh, there's that moment uh, in the hall of the tower when she's like, I was unaware that she could channel. Sorry, what did you say? I was unaware that she could channel. <laughs> and then the iconic. Swan Sanche waits for only one woman and it's not you. Oh, it's such a good line read. <laughs> but okay, beyond those, if you ask me any other day, I might have another answer. But I think because right now I'm thinking about different perspectives that the show gave me, I'm in that headspace. So I'm going to have to go with that uh, entire speech by Isla uh, from the Tuathon. In the books, the philosophy of the Tuathon, it, it's nice. It comes across as nice, but naive. It feels, it feels surface level. Uh, but the show, the show's explanation of, oh, this explanation that Isla gives, it has depth. It makes, it makes their philosophy feel worthy, feel worth holding on to. Like, like it's something worth being willing to suffer and die for. So that whole speech, specifically the line, uh, what is it exactly? What greater revenge against violence than peace? greater revenge against death than life. Yeah, right now, that's my favorite. Ask me tomorrow, I might have a different answer. Okay, question four. Uh, which character did you end up loving that you didn't expect to love so much? <laughs> okay, all right. So I know Rob wrote this question singular, like I'm supposed to pick one character, but Rob is not the boss of me, so I'm picking two. First, Alana. Good Lord, why is the show doing this to me? I am... Uh, okay, <laughs> trying to keep this spoiler free, but damn, why you gotta do this to me? I don't need to like Alana. I just, no, I don't, but I love her. And then next, Leandrin. Good Lord. Like, okay, she obviously is not a nice person. I don't like her as a person, but as a character, oh my God. And, he and here's the thing. I don't actually hate her. Like, Leandrin for me is not a love to hate her character for, for me. She's a character I just feel, I feel incredibly nervous and wary of. Like, I don't think I trust her, but also I kind of care about her. Like, I want to know her backstory. There are moments in the show where I actually sympathize with her. Like, I, I kind of suspect that Maureen broke her heart and I, I feel bad for her. I just, ugh, I kind of love Leandrin. What the hell? Okay, question number five. Uh, who had the best outfit of season one? Oh man, okay. So I made an entire series of videos going into deep dives into the costumes. I will link the series below, but be warned, there are tons of spoilers in those videos because the costumes had all sorts of clues and hints in them, literally. There are spoilers in the costumes for the end of the series. I am not joking. The costuming on the show was no joke. So this is hard for me because I, like, I love the costuming on the show, but I think, I think I'm gonna have to go with Swan's costume. Not. Not her, her regal, like, I'm the HBIC, y'all better show me some respect costume. I'm talking about her more subtle costume that she wore when she was meeting with Nynaeve and Egwene. I love it because it's deceptively simple. Like, if you aren't looking closely, it can look almost, almost plain. But, like, there in the sleeves, you can see the pattern, the, the quality. This isn't some cheap pair of comfy pajamas. This is, this is an elegant outfit. But okay, more than that, and I, I don't know if this is something that the costume designers were thinking, but I know that this is what I thought when I looked at this outfit, that it is gorgeous, it is elegant, it has clean lines, but it also looks comfortable. And, and, and okay, this is the part that stood out to me. It looks like it is designed without any consideration 
for the male gaze, which makes perfect sense for somebody living their life in the white tower. There is no emphasis of her breasts or her hips. Like, generally, when clothing is designed to be fancy or dressy for women, it is typically designed in some way to to highlight or enhance our our secondary sexual characteristics. But but there's none of that here. It is gorgeous without being sexual. And it just, it fits. It fits her place in this world perfectly. Question number six. Who portrayed their character the best and why? This, I think, is the meanest question on this list because the acting. The acting in the show, I think, is probably the highlight of the show for me. I, I said it a million times, but I'll say it again here because... Why not? I, I did not expect the acting on the show to be that good. Like, even Rosamund Pike, I, you know, she's an amazing actress, but I kind of assumed that she would be half-assing it. I don't know why I thought that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe my brain was just like, I don't know, she's a movie star. This is television, so she's just going to phone it in, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why I thought that. I just did. And so the, the level of acting on the show, it just, it, it blew me away. And I don't know, maybe if my expectations hadn't been so low, I wouldn't have been so amazed. But, well, no, because even on rewatches, I'm floored by the quality of the acting. So picking one, seriously, Rob, fuck you. I think I have to go with Nynaeve. Not like with not, with Zoe Robbins' portrayal of Nynaeve. Not because I think that she was was better than the others, but because of the Nynaeve of it all. Like the Nynaeve and me of it all. Because Nynaeve is the character that I've spent the most time thinking about. So... If she felt off to me, it would have been more noticeable and more of a problem with her than with any other character, any of the other portrayals, because I'm hyper-focused on her when she's on screen. So if there was a moment in her portrayal that felt off, it would jump out to me more than with the others. And there just wasn't. Well, actually, no, there there is. In episode eight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've all discussed our issues with episode eight ad nauseum, but the, the moment that feels off, uh, is, has nothing to do with her acting. It's the, the writing, uh, like what the writing is having her character do that. It's the moment when she, while saving Egwene during the, the final battle there, she gives a speech. That is the one moment that felt off, just because I don't think my personal headcanon naive would have given a speech in that moment. She would have just done what needed to be done and not made a, big scene out of it but that has nothing to do with zoe robbins portrayal and i'm fairly certain that that whole thing was a a rewrite to cover for some changes needed due to to covid restrictions so yeah so yeah with the exception of that one moment every other second that she's on screen feels perfect to me uh okay question seven tell us about a moment that unexpectedly made you laugh or cry in season one Oh, there's a couple of moments that made me cry. Uh, from episode four, there's the moment where Nynaeve and Lan share their prayer rituals with each other. I get choked up watching that. Like, still, I get choked up. And, <laughs> okay, probably the most surprising cry moment for me was the first time I heard the, the famous, I will hate the man you choose because he is not me, come out of La Daniel Henney's mouth. Because, oh, that moment in the books, it, that is the root of my love for Lan, that speech. It is a well-documented fact that in my mind... <laughs> Lan is the only character in these books that I ever thought of as hot. And it begins with that speech, that moment. So it, it's oh, it's just one of the most beautifully written lines of dialogue. And hearing it the first time, I just started crying. <laughs> it's funny because like on rewatches, I do have some issues with the framing of that line. But yeah, the first time I heard it, I just tears just immediately. I was like, oh, I, did, I didn't expect this. But okay, that line only got me the, the first time. But there's another line in episode seven that's still, like, when I rewatch, like, if I were to rewatch it now, I bet you this line would make me, make me cry because it makes me cry every time. And I don't know why. I've talked about it before. It's uh, when Moraine and Lan are talking. Uh, as Lan is leaving, Moraine says, I like her, you know? The wisdom. And it just, oh, it still gets me. I've talked about it a lot and I've tried, you know, along with people in the comments to figure out what it is about that line that makes me cry. And I'm not sure. I think what at least what part of it is, is that in that line, uh, you can feel the depth of Moraine's love for Lan and the depth of their friendship, their love for each other, her desire for him to be happy. I don't know. It just, it touches me. 
As far as moments that made me laugh, uh, there's a few. Uh, those moments of dialogue, those line reads that I, I talked about earlier were pretty funny. But uh, to pick another one, this moment with uh, Egwene Nine Even Swan, where Swan is saying, you're the most powerful channeler in a thousand years, and you see Egwene swell with pride. And then the way she looks at Nynaeve in shock when she realizes that Swan is talking about her. Oh, that moment cracked me up. Okay, question eight. What moment was the best homage to the books? Okay, there's a lot. But for me, it's got to be Wheat for, for Minotherin. Uh, before the show came out, I would have bet, and I think I even said it on my channel, that we were not going to get this. It's just, it's so long in the books, and it involves characters that are not in the books. It's just, it's a lot of exposition. And I, I love it. I love Wheat for Minotherin. Don't get me wrong. It's a great passage in the books, but I just, I thought that there was no way that we were going to get into the show, and we did, and it was amazing. And, oh... Actually, that's another one that made me cry. Weirdly, not the first time, but on like a rewatch, I've cried not every time, but a couple of times at that moment. Oh, and not only did we get the story, we got a song. So yeah, that was that was a wonderful homage. Okay, question nine. Aside from Blood Snow, what was your favorite cold open? <laughs> okay, Blood Snow was epic. <laughs> True story. After episode seven, uh, I went to my friend's house and she has a, just like a crazy TV. Like it's actually bigger than my, my bed. Like my, my bed is wider than her television, but the length of her TV is longer than my bed. It's insane. And uh, when I was there, I set up my prime account on her TV so that I could watch the blood snow cold open on her TV. So now we, I share my prime account with her because of that cold open. <laughs> okay. Aside from blood snow, I mean, I gotta pick episode three, right? Like, the naive one? That was epic. And, and like, knowing from the behind-the-scenes footage that they actually had to tell Zoe to slow down when running because she kept outpacing the camera. Oh, it was amazing. Okay, here's the thing. That cold open, I actually saw before the show came out because it was released as a teaser. I have a reaction to it, actually. Maybe I'll link to that, too. It's one of my best-performing videos because I did the reaction first thing in the morning, and I think... People really like me groggy. <laughs> so, I don't know. You check that video out. But anyway, the point is, I, I loved that cold open, but the impact of it was kind of lost on me when the show aired because I'd already seen it. So, I'm going to pick another one. And I think, I think I'm going to go with episode eight. Oh, my opinion may differ tomorrow because I'm wavering between episode eight and episode two, which is the White Cloak cold open. But I don't know. I was just so impressed by the, the flashback to the Age of Legends. Like, I love the set design, the costumes, the, the, the glimpse into the, the futuristic nature of the age. Like, all of that was great. But what I was most impressed by in that scene was how amazingly well the actors did with this fake language. Like, it sounds so real, so natural coming out of their mouths. Being the nerd that I am, I've watched more than a few shows or movies with made-up languages, and it's, that's just not always the case. Sometimes you can feel them straining around these weird sounds and syllables, and it sounds fake. At least to me, it does. But this, this felt real. They were able to emote and, and oh, I don't know, it just felt natural. And it's, once again, the acting, the acting in the show. So good. Okay, question 10. What was the best moment in the uh, behind-the-scenes footage of season two? That's interesting to ask specifically from the behind-the-scenes and not the sneak peek. I had to go and double-check. Um, okay, so from the behind-the-scenes, I think it has to be this close-up of uh, the white cloak. And I had to thank Pez uh, for this from like my costume videos because this shot is epic, and I probably would have liked it, but with Pez having me think about costumes... This just jumped out at me because this costume is gorgeous. And I, I really liked the White Cloak costumes in season one, but you can see the upgrade they got in season two. Like the, the intricate design on his chest piece, the, the golden knot, the shoulder piece, the design in the leather. It's, it's all so good. Okay, question 11. Which new actor are you most excited to see on screen? Kara, Donal, or Ayula? Kara's going to be playing... Okay, I should say before I say this, this is where the spoilers come in for Beyond Season 1. Uh, if you don't want to be spoiled for anything in Season 2, go away. If you don't want to be spoiled Beyond Book 1, go away. None of these actors were in Season 1, and one of them is playing a character that doesn't show up until Book 3. So, you know, go away if you don't want to be spoiled. But the rest of you, okay. Uh, so it's Kara, Donal, or Ayula. And here come the spoilers. Kara's playing Elaine Tracan. Donal is uh, the new actor for uh, Matt. And Ayula is playing Avienda. And again, this is such a mean question, Rob. Why are you like this? 
Like, I can't wait to see them all. Okay, I gotta pick one. And it's gonna be one of the women, right? Like, <laughs> I was talking with Bree the other day, and she said something that I hope she doesn't mind if I quote. I'm gonna quote her anyway. Uh, she said that the show has one group that is hyper-servicing, and that is character-focused people with a particular interest in female characters. And yeah, that's me. And it's about time somebody made a show for me. I have disposable income. This is not wokeness. This is just capitalism at work, finding new people to milk for cash. And I'm, I'm happy to be milked. Ew. <laughs> that sounded so gross. I might cut that out. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm just saying I'm happy to be the target audience for once. <laughs> Ew. Okay. Between Kara and Ayula, oh, I think I might have to go Kara. I, uh, I've grown to like Elaine more and more in the past year or so, since I made a video about her, actually. And I made that video because someone was talking about the Elaine hate in the fandom, and I was surprised. Not so much that people hated her, but that people had strong feelings about Elaine at all. Um, I think Danny from Wheel Wee's, uh, the Wheel Wee's podcast calls her mashed potatoes. Like, she's just, she's bland. And I kind of agree, or at least I used to agree. I don't know if I do anymore, because making that video made me think about her more and, and you know what I actually really like mashed potatoes like I do they're they're nice and they're comforting and put gravy on them and they're great and I think I really like Elaine like she's not as showy as a lot of the other female characters but I would miss her if she wasn't there and I think what Elaine brings to the table is I love her relationship with the other characters like her relationship with Avienda is amazing and I know a lot of people ship them I personally don't but I'm not opposed to the ship especially not with how the show is handling things. But I also really like her friendship with Nynaeve. I, I think it's a super underrated relationship in the books. They are a classic, odd couple friendship, and I love it. They both see and bring out the best in each other, and it's great. So, yeah, I think, I think Kara. But honestly, that was a cruel question, Rob. I can't, I can't wait to see them all. Like, I'm, I can't wait to see Avienda on screen just in general. I think Ayula's gonna kill it. And Donal, I'm excited to see what he brings to Matt. I, why, why, Rob? Why are you like this? So, yeah, that is the, uh, Wheel Time Hype Train tag. And, uh, as is tradition with tag videos, I am going to tag, uh, three more creators. I'm gonna tag my buddy Bodhi, uh, from Just Somebody's Opinion. Uh, uh, and I'm gonna tag, uh, Jess from one of my co-hosts on the Tarval and After Dark podcast that I should mention more. Really need to be better at promoting myself. Tarval and After Dark. Get it wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to tag Jess, and I'm going to tag Vance, the Bard of the Red Hand. Uh, so yeah, you guys take this tag, run with it, and uh, yeah. But uh, you, uh, the rest of you watching, let me know what your answers to these questions were uh, in the comments below. And... If you like my videos and you want to support me, I do have a Patreon. It is linked in the description below. I am so grateful to my patrons. I I couldn't do this without you. I, I'm, yeah, I just couldn't. I, you, you help me in so many ways. Thank you. And uh, with that, I am going to end this here. So please like, subscribe. Don't forget to leave me a comment. And I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>